Mm. Oh. Hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today's video is really special because we are going to be having a vintage and a rare watercolor set all the way from Spain. So without further ado, let's review the Espanoleto Aquarela. Also let me just share that in December 2020, I was in Madrid, Spain and Barcelona also and I tried to scout for some locally made paints, some Spanish paints, but I don't think I was very fortunate. I found one actually, the uh, Wingo Artist watercolors, but I'm not sure if these are really, you know, uh, made in Spain because it doesn't say that it's made in Spain, although they have provided here the company um, address, I think, saying Barcelona. I have this suspicion that these are <laughs> made in China and they just sourced it, but. I will have to do more you know um, research to find that out if it's really made in Spain if you guys know anything about this brand please let me know at the comment section these Espanoleto watercolor paints were kindly sent to me by Susan from Spain she's also an artist and a youtuber she has a, a YouTube page and a Facebook page her name is Nina Ferry so please do check out her account she has some great watercolor contents too and she's also you know exploring art materials watercolors I love what she's doing in her channel she told me in her email that these paints are already rare and very hard to find and I can agree with that because I tried finding, you know, sellers of these and I found these tubes from Amazon Spain, I think. I'm linking it here also if you want to check it out. But I'm not sure if these are the same paints or if these are real or legit paints of uh, Espanoleto. Because the tube design is different, I don't know if this is the older version or the newer version. And also Nina Ferry is also not sure if these are the real um, Espanoleto paints. Other from that um, Amazon Spain website, I couldn't anymore find any sources of these paints. So yeah, these are really rare. And for me, rare paints are treasures. Susan sent this to me on October 2020 and if I remember correctly, it arrived late January or February. It took months before this reached my doorstep and I'm not surprised because there's still pandemic going on and uh, the customs is really strict nowadays. I found a website that I think matches the creators of these paints which is uh, Lienzos Levante. I'm linking it here for you to check it out. So now I'm really excited to open this. So let's do this. I hope the paints and the contents are safe inside because I'm cutting the uh, edges. So let's see. Oh, wow. This really looks so special. It looks like a gift and it comes with these wax. I don't know. <laughs> this wax um, seal. Wow. This looks so special. Thank you, Susan. I'm already loving it even if I have not opened it yet. And also I think I have a letter here which also has the wax seal. This is like so special. And let's see what we still have. And we have another gift here. It looks like a gift because it's it has a ribbon. So let's first um, open letter hmm so she gave me a letter um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna read this this might be a uh, personal hmm I think I can read the last part so she says here thank you again for sharing your video and knowledge Alan I'm sure you don't know how happy it makes some people to hear hello it's me again Alan chip out of their phones take care Susan hmm aka Nina Ferry. That's her YouTube and Facebook page name. This is just so special and so sweet of you, Susan. I really, really appreciate it. It's not every day or every week or every month or every year that I receive something like this. So this really means a lot. Now, hmm, 
let's first check this out but I don't want to I don't want to destroy the seal because I want it you know preserved it's so special so let's just cut the edges to see the contents mm. no So here are the prints of her sample paintings. This really looks nice. Looks like a card. You can already write your introduction or dedication here. So here, Espanoletto Maker uh, Hooker's Green, Espanoletto Sap Green. So these are the colors that she used. And here's the date for February 12, 2018, and January 12, 2018. So these are nice, Susan. Now here are our dot cards. These are not just dot cards. These are huge drops of paints. These are generous amount of paints. And yeah, the amount of paints in each dot I think is equivalent to almost one fourth or <laughs> a half of a half pan. So this is more than enough for me to you know try and test the paints out so again really appreciate it so here are the color names in latin or in spanish the pigment code and the light fastness rating s is for i'm not sure and here's the english name and the number code so it matches totally our grids for the dots so finally let's open this one is this a cookie or pastillas what's this oh of course i have received a tube sample so that of course i know how the tubes look like she made sure if there's gonna be leak it will not affect the other contents of the package so that is very wise of you Susan so here we have one tube sample and this is cadmium orange azo since the catalog that I found was in Spanish, I couldn't understand it instantly. I need to use an application to understand and translate it. So for now, we have very limited information, but I'll be linking the website and the catalog here at the description box for you to uh, check it out. Anyway, these paints are really hard to find now. So this review is for your entertainment and for those who might be possibly finding a source so if you guys found a source of these paints please let me know please comment it at the description box because there may there might be some artists here or who are interested to trying it out also and also this video could be interesting to those who already have these paints so now let's take a look at the soup i think we have here the logo it says spanoletto aquarella aquarella is watercolor we have here the number code and the color name in one, two, three, four, five, six languages. The tube is aluminum with a plastic cap and this is 8 ml. We have here the color name. We have here the, I think, uh, Goma Arabia, Gum Arabic, the binder. Then we have here the pigment codes and names. So we have here two pigments and the uh, solides we have two stars i think that is the light fastness because there are i think stars there i think it's too small but yeah and here it says lienzos levante s dot l so i think that's the manufacturer and we have i think here their address and now for our swatches and sample painting of course as always i'm using arches 185 gold press cotton paper and for our brush i have here a silver black velvet 1 4 inch flat brush and my escoda reserva brush size 2. so let's begin swatching let's reveal our dot card and it's covered in uh, wax paper 
for them to be safer. Wow. I'm really amazed how generous the amount of paints Susan has given me. And they dried very nicely. As you can see, no cracks. And it's a bit shiny. Some The colors are matte. I think that's a good indication. The fact that they don't have cracks. So let's begin with the titanium white using PW6. Of course, this is expected to be opaque. Next, we have cadmium yellow light azo using PY1. PY1 is not very light fast pigment. Next, we have cadmium yellow light using PY35 and PY37 is to 1. Now, this is um, a combination of two real cadmium pigments, so this is surely a uh, light fast yellow. Our next color is cadmium yellow deep using PY35, PY37 is to 1, and PO20, pigment orange 20. These are all cadmium colors, so this is again another strong extremely light fast color in this set next we have uh, naples yellow using py1 and py42 and py6 py1 and py6 are not very light fast color but py42 yellow ochre is a light fast color next color is naples yellow reddish using PW6, PO13, and PY1. PO13 is also not very light fast. It's just fair. Next color is cadmium orange azo using PO13 and PY1. PO13 and PY1 are fair when it comes to light fastness. Next we have cadmium red light using PO20 and PR108. Now these again are two genuine cadmium pigments. So we are sure that these are light fast, extremely light fast or excellent in light fastness. So far the colors re wet instantly and the colors are vibrant but most of them are on the opaque side because mostly are cadmium colors. Next color we have cadmium red deep using PR48 is to 8 Azo it says again here so this is not a real cadmium color and uh, this is also not very light fast and this is also another rare pigment I think it's not usually found in brands but it's a nice color as you can see it's very vivid it's very strong and I love strong colors Next is Vermilion using PR3 and PO13. PR3 is beta naphthol, I think, and this is also fair when it comes to light fastness. Next color is Geranium Lake Rose using PR16 and PW6. PR16 is also not very light fast, but this is a nice pink. You cannot deny that it looks so good. It reminds me of the Bougainvillea, you know, Bougainvillea flower. Next, we have Imperial Magenta using PV2. And this is another color or pigment that we don't usually see in other brands. This violet is also fair when it comes to light fastness. And it reminds me of a manganese violet. PV16 if I remember correctly. Next we have Permanent Violet. Permanent Violet is using PV2 and PV27. PV27 is not very light fast. It's more of a fugitive color and that is quite usual for violets that look like this. But it's exactly like a Carbazole Violet. Next is bluish violet using PV2 and PV27 so it's the same color it's a bit cooler as compared to the permanent violet next is Prussian blue 
sadly this is the only blue absolute blue color here I wish they had an ultramarine but who am I to complain <laughs> this was just given to me this version of Prussian blue using PB27 of course is very turquoisey and I'm loving it next is turquoise blue now this is a mixture of two pigments um, PB15 is to 3 and uh, PG7 and yes this is the turquoise blue color that I'm expecting to see now that we have the turquoise blue here on the side that looks more like the PB16 blue this Prussian blue now looks like a uh, cobalt turquoise using PB36 next is hooker's green using PG7 PY1 and PG8 PG8 is the real hooker's green color but I'm happy that they mixed other pigments here to make it stronger especially the PG7 because hooker's green is not light fast but it's a beautiful dark green color that is present in other brands like white knights that's the only not so light fast color or pigment that I uh, love using because it's a very dark green next we have uh, sap green using PY1 and PG8 this one just looks so natural it reminds me of the sap green of Sennelier our next color is the chrome oxide green this is uh, yeah, cr chromium green oxide in the Ingle Smith using PG17 of course this is a very light fast pigment this is usually opaque next we have Viridian and I'm glad that we have here a real Viridian pigment PG18 it's cool to see that the uh, genuine PG18 rewets instantly better than the, the Daniel Smith version now let's go to yellow ochre using PY42 and surprisingly it's vibrant and it's not too opaque it's only semi opaque this reminds me of Mars Yellow from Daniel Smith now we have here the golden ochre using PY42 and PO20 wow this is the first time I'm seeing this combination it looks like a more organic version of um, the yellow ochre it's earthier and yeah I prefer this one over yellow ochre now this version of the burnt umber is really strong it's using PBR6 and I'm loving it it looks exactly just like the burnt umber of Daniel Smith next we have burnt sienna using PBR7 this time and yes this is the real burnt sienna that I know just like with the burnt sienna of the other brands like Daniel Smith and I'm loving the texture of these two browns here now we go to our last row and we have here Indian red of course using PR 101 and of course this is expected to be more on the opaque side that's natural to this color next we have sepia using PBR 6 the burnt umber and the PR3 and this is also a nice transparent version of sepia I love the earth colors of Espanoleto they look very natural and the texture is just right next we have paints gray using PB15 is to 3 Taylor blue PB29 ultramarine PBK6 which is the black color here and their paints gray version is near to indigo it's more on the blue side and this is how I like my paints gray and now for our last color we have here ivory black using PB6 and PB15 is to 3 now I'm not sure if there's such a pigment PB6 I'm I don't know but considering that uh, this is PB15 is to 3 which is a thalo blue green shade I don't think this is a blue color here because this is very dark as you can see I think this should be PBK6 
pigment black 6 not, just like in paints gray right not pb15 is to 3 um susan wrote here let me double check yeah pb6 maybe she overlooked but yeah i'm quite sure this is a black pigment because it's already blue pigment if this is again another blue then it should not look like this yeah but it's a beautiful ivory black um, version but i'm wondering why they had to uh you know use two pigments for ivory black i think they can only use one so now let's wait for our swatches to dry and now let's do some color mixes because we have uh, enough space for this so for flesh i'm thinking of combining cadmium yellow light and imperial magenta yes this is how my skin color looks like <laughs> yep next color we have here gray so i'm trying to get um gray using prussian blue so for our next color i'm trying to achieve gray using prussian blue and uh, indian red although it has tendency to uh, look muddy because both are opaque surprisingly uh, the Prussian blue is semi-opaque which is not common in this pigment and as you can see it becomes pastel like when you add water in it yeah that's how it behaves but yeah I think we are successful in uh, getting a gray color here next we are trying to get shadow violet this is a grayish violet color and for that i have chosen to use viridian and imperial magenta because uh, usually the ingredients of shadow violet or a moon glow is a viridian an ultramarine and a red color but here i don't have ultramarine instead i'm using a purple color to summarize the absence of ultramarine and the red pigment like the misty morning of uh, Roman small a lighter version of uh, moon glow I think yeah it's nice last color in our mixing experiment we have here neutral tint and for this I'm gonna mix turquoise blue and vermilion this is just very deep in a neutral way yeah do you agree so here are our mixes now let's wait for these to dry before we have a closer look for now let's do our landscape sample painting As you can see, I'm trying to achieve a warm blue here by mixing the uh, purple, the bluish purple, and the Prussian blue, and the phthalo turquoise. Yeah, I'm using white now because I forgot to uh, anticipate the uh, splashes of the waves to the rocks.
so now it's dry we can now remove our tape now everything is dry let's have a closer look Now let's review our Espanoleto Aquarela. First, for the color selection, of course, we cannot comment on that because this set was not bought as a set. I think these were collected individually, individual tubes. But looking at the selection, I think it can stand. I think it is almost balanced. It is going to be perfect if there was an ultramarine, but there wasn't. But I was able to make actually a warm blue here by mixing turquoise blue and bluish violet. So... I was able to manage that. Now when it comes to vibrancy, I think most of the colors are really vibrant, especially the reds and the blues and the violets. But some are a little pale, like some of the yellows and the these two greens. The earth colors are also nice. When it comes to the movement of the colors, how they flow, um, I think they don't actually move that quickly. I think they're kind of heavy and for me that's fine. I actually prefer that kind of uh, paint because I believe they're more manageable. Well, that's my personal take on watercolor behavior. Now when it comes to the transparency of the colors, I think a lot of them are opaque or semi-opaque because most of the colors are cadmiums. But I think in our set the most transparent colors are the earth colors. Now for the chalky test, of course we're going to be using a napkin sheet for that. We're going to be rubbing it and see if there is going to be transfer of pigments or colors. I know this is not the best way to check. Of course we can uh, check that in our water but I'm choosing to do this process because we do our outputs on paper not on water and of course I want to see how the paints strongly adhere on paper so I'm choosing this process of testing it. So let's rub our um, paper and see if we uh, get pigments or colors in our paper. So our paper is clean. So I don't think these paints are chalky. Now if we are looking at these paints as professional grade paints, then I would have to be critical on the pigment selection. I have noticed that there is a mix of some strong and really excellent in light fastness pigments here. And also there are not so light fast colors, some are almost fugitive. For that, you have to be very cautious if you are selecting this brand or other brands with fugitive or not so light fast pigments because uh, if you are going to be using this for commission paintings or paintings to be displayed, you better choose the pigments that are light fast. And evidently, some of the colors used multiple pigments even to those colors that are not expected to use multiple pigments like the ivory black which used two pigments the vermilion also used two and also this rose color i think it doesn't need any more a pwu6 but maybe it served as a brightener and also the cadmium yellow deep they had three cadmium colors or cadmium pigments here now when it comes to the mixing of uh, colors for our experiment i am I'm very happy and very satisfied because I was able to achieve all these colors that I uh, targeted to achieve. The flesh, the gray, the shadow violet, and the neutral tint. And for our sample painting, I was also very happy. I was satisfied with the performance of the paints. Even though they appeared to be uh, more on the opaque side on our uh, swatches, I was able to, I think, manage a very uh, transparent watercolor painting. And now for our favorite part, the comparison portion. Let's begin with a set of paints that are less performing as compared to the Espanoleto Aquarela. So we have the Best Buy watercolors, the Symbolion watercolors, the Dong A Creative, the Sterling Arts watercolors, the Giorgioni watercolor cakes, the Reeves watercolors, the Sakura Koi Pocket Field sketch box, the Pebeo Studio watercolors, the Faber Castellan tubes, the Pentel watercolors, fine. Mary's watercolors, 
Maddie's watercolor half pants, the Magiwa Basics watercolors, the Art Ranger watercolors, the Lefranc and Bourgeois Louvre watercolors, the Prang watercolors, the Pelican transparent watercolors, and the Kuratake Gansai Tambi watercolors. Now let's go to the student grade paints that are I think very comparable with Espanoleto Aquarela but still I'm choosing the Espanoleto Aquarela because these student grade paints failed to provide the pigment codes. So let's begin with the Simi Art Solid Watercolors 50s, the Simi Art Arts, Arts Watercolors, the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, the Owen Watercolor Cakes, the Owen Watercolors in Metal Case, the Pretty Excellent Watercolors, the Koinur Anilinki Brilliant Watercolors, the Miyahimi Solid Watercolors, the Superior Foldable Palette, the Superior Watercolor in Half Pants, and finally the Superior Fan Palette. Now let's go to our student grade paints that provided the pigment codes. So this one's gonna be very tough, and I'm gonna be telling my choice. Now we have Grumbacher Academy. I think this is a draw. Now let's go to the Windsor Newton China. The Espanoleta Aquarela colors are more trustworthy. They are more appealing to me, so I'm choosing them. Now, the Windsor Newton Cutman. I prefer the texture of the Espanolito Aquarela, but the Windsor Newton Cutman are more transparent, and uh, I believe the pigments are stronger, so I think I'm choosing Cutman. Now, when it comes to Sonnet watercolors, not all the pigments are also strong because they have two here that are not so light fast. I find the Sonnet watercolors to be more appealing and vibrant and more transparent so I'm choosing them. Now we have here the Van Gogh watercolors. I love the Van Gogh watercolors. They're my favorite student grade paints. And I prefer also the color or the pigment selection of Van Gogh so I'm also choosing them over the Espanoleto Aquarela. Now let's go to our professional grade paints that have of course provided the pigment code except for one. And now let's do our comparison although I can say in advance that most of these professional grades are performing better as compared to the Espanoleto Aquarela. First, let's begin with the Kukuyo Camelin Camel watercolors. They're considering themselves as professional grade paints, but they failed to provide the pigment code. But still, I can see and I have experienced its quality, its beauty. So, I'm I'm choosing them. Now, let's have the Lucas Aquarel 1862. I think these are the paints that are most comparable to Espanoleto Aquarela. They're both thick and they're both more on the opaque side. But if I have to choose one between these two, I'm choosing Espanoleto Aquarela. I prefer its behavior and the colors are also more intense. Now let's go to Prima Marketing. Both used not so light fast pigments. But mm, I think I'm choosing the Prima Marketing Tropicals because the colors are cleaner and more transparent. Now for Mungyo, we have the same issue. They also used some not so light fast colors, but I think the colors are more punchy, so I'm choosing the Mongyo Professional Watercolors. Now with the Masters, um, it should be Maris Masters Watercolors. I think they're also more punchy, they're more vibrant, and uh, the colors and the pigments are also more trustworthy, so I'm choosing them also. Now let's have Paul Rubens Watercolors. The colors of Paul Rubens are more transparent. The pigment selection is better. So yeah, I'm choosing Paul Rubens. Now that's the same issue for Blocks Extra Fine. So I'm choosing Blocks Extra Fine. Of course, White Knights I think is better. The Isaro, Isaro Extra Fine. Now for Dutrecht watercolors, the colors are also more vibrant and the pigment selection is stronger also. So I'm choosing them. Now when it comes to the Brandt watercolors. The vibrancy is very comparable, but the pigments are better in Rembrandt, so I'm choosing them also. Egalio Honey watercolors, these are my favorite Italian watercolors, so there's no question, I'm choosing them also. Windsor Newton Professional also has some strong paints and pigments here, so obviously I'm choosing them also. Now we have Holbein watercolors from Japan. The color selection is also nice and the colors are very pigmented and strong so I have to choose them also. Core watercolors. 
when it comes to the opacity i think they're very comparable but the colors of core are very very vibrant and strong so i'm choosing them for that reason and also the pigment selection is undeniably very good of course we have the Mijello mission gold the Mijello watercolors are some of the brightest and the most striking watercolors out there so there's no question i'm choosing them and also the color range is also amazing and finally of course my top choice now i am declaring it the daniel smith watercolors um of course these are the strongest watercolors i have they provide pigment codes the behavior is just right for me the pigment load is unmatched so of course I'm choosing the Daniel Smith watercolors so now if you are gonna ask me would I recommend the Espanoleto Aquarela my answer is yes if you can find tubes or <laughs> sets of these I'm not sure if these paints are student grade paints or professional grade paints. If they're student grade paints, they're surely high quality. But if they're professional grade paints, I think they're more on the entry level. Because most of the colors are on the opaque side and they use some not so light fast colors. However, I am very happy that they have uh, included some genuine cadmium colors here that are really light fast although some users don't like cadmiums and even cobalts because of the toxicity of these colors but I'm not bothered with that because there's no history or records yet that someone is poisoned by cadmium or cobalt colors so I've read somewhere that one needs a huge amount of these cadmium or cobalt pigments before it you know gives a poisoning effect so yeah anyway yeah i'm happy that they have also some strong pigments the colors are vibrant there's no question about that the behavior and the way it flows the way they mix i'm also very happy so now my only issue in the espanoleto aquarela are the use of not so light fast pigments in some of their colors so if you already have these paints or if you are interested to sourcing the Espanoleto Aquarela I would really suggest you to select the uh, stronger pigments if you are gonna be using it on uh, commission paintings or for paintings for display but if you are using this for your sketchbooks or for your practice paintings this is just totally fine this will really do the job well also, I'd like to share that in the catalog that I found, the formula or the pigments used in some of the colors are already changed. Now, I do not know which one is the more updated, if this one or the one in the catalog because I couldn't find the date where it was released. And also, I do not have any idea when this um, Espanolito set that I have was released also. So, I have no idea. Overall, I am very happy with my experience with the Espanoleto Aquarela. I am very, very happy that Susan sent this to me. She is just so sweet and generous to do this. I really appreciate your effort and your dedication in art because I know you want me to review this and to share this to our viewers. So now, I think that wraps up our Espanoleto Aquarela review. If you have any questions about the Espanoleto Aquarela, you may also comment it below. Or you may also ask Nina Ferry. She has uploaded a review of these paints as well. And I'm linking it here. So, I think we're done. Thank you for watching. And see you on the next video.